In the uh, world of uh, checkpoint inhibitors, uh, do, you, uh, do we have any data yet that a monotherapy with checkpoint inhibitor has a role in prostate cancer? Well, we all should be testing our patients for microsatellite instability. That is an FDA-approved indication for pembrolizumab. About 3% of prostate cancer patients do have that. Uh, in that paper that I cited before from Sloan Kettering about, uh, about microsatellite instability, there was a section on, on those patients who were treated. About half of those patients responded uh, to a checkpoint inhibitor. So I think that that can make a significant difference in our patients' outcomes. And Chuck Ryan has got a case, which I think is very, very interesting, about a patient who had a complete response uh, to a checkpoint inhibitor who was uh, microsatellite unstable. And now he doesn't know what to do as to far as to whether he should continue treatment or not and whether this patient right. should stop hormone therapy. Yeah, so. I, one of my friends, uh, David Schaefer in uh, uh, Albany, has a similar case where he gave uh, atezolizumab uh, in an earlier trial. That was an atezolizumab enzalutamide trial, which you may want to comment on. Mm -hmm. And the patient is in a five-year remission. Um, and there's no clear uh, genetic reason for him to be in this remission. They've biopsied him several times and there's been no obvious, there's no Lynch, there's no DNA repair issues. So occasionally there are these unusual responses to uh, checkpoint inhibitors. I think we, we underestimate, we think about a drug's mechanism as, as being monolithic. The kinase inhibitors inhibit multiple kinases. Abiraterone, as we talked about before, can downregulate DNA repair. Enzalutamide, a couple of years ago, surprisingly has an immune modulatory effect. Mm. And Julie Graff from uh, Oregon has actually exploited that particular observation, looking at combinations of pembrolizumab plus enzalutamide and showing that there is significant activity between the two. Um, now, there was a randomized trial of tezolizumab uh, with enzalutamide. Unfortunately, it's only been replete, re reported in press release form at this point. It was negative. But again, it, it emphasizes the fact that we cannot treat all comers. We have to understand the biology and tailor our treatments for our individual patients. So as I understand it, Merck is looking at a number of uh, combination trials. Right. Uh, the, I remember there's at least docetaxel right. with or without Pembro. Exactly. Um, what are the other ones that uh, are going? So I think there are four interesting trials that Merck is doing right now the docetaxel uh, uh, plus or minus the Pembro, which uh, I'm one of the PIs on, so I've got to Good. disclose that. Uh, the, do the enzalutamide plus or minus Pembro. There is a uh, Elaprib plus or minus Pembro as well. Hmm. And the other interesting trial that is about to open, which I really am very excited about, is Pembrolizumab plus enzalutamide and androgen blockade up front. Hmm. Up and in so hormone sensitive. In hormone sensitive disease. Uh. So the, the question is, is the immune, uh, 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 immune milieu, milieu different in hormone sensitive versus castrate resistant. A lot of people do think that you have a different immune response in that particular situation. Certainly when you're inducing hormone therapy, you're causing a large release of antigens from the prostate cancer cells apoptosing, and perhaps that's the right time to administer immune therapy because then you can use that system right. to clean up the cellular debris. It's going to be an interesting uh, trial to be coming out. Well, these these are big trials. Exactly. I mean, the, the Merck has uh, put a large amount of effort into designing and conducting these. There are some negatives. Uh, one, for example, is that it's placebo-controlled. Right. So the enzalutamide trial, there are patients getting placebo, uh, uh, Pembro. Um, and we'll, we'll see if the patients accept those kind of restrictions. And again, talk about the full gamut of these trials. Nivolumab is also being looked at in a randomized trial, uh, Nevo plus DOSI versus DOSI alone, docetaxel alone. So there are a number of different trials that are out there looking at immune checkpoints. The interesting thing about both uh, Nevo plus DOSI as well as um, uh, uh, Pembro plus DOSI is the radiographic progression-free survival does seem to be a little bit better Mm -hmm. uh, than what's been reported in the past. And remember, these patients are post-abiraterone. And the survival of docetaxel from some reports yeah. is a little bit less in those patients. So perhaps, and it's hard to compare this because it's different yeah. eras. Yeah, but, very different but eras. Again, but again, I think that, that, that there's very, very interesting data that's going to be generated from this. Well, your initial work with docetaxel, which really laid the foundation for docetaxel in metastatic disease, has really now spawned a whole series of 
tax of uh, dose taxel plus trials. Right. And I think it's fair to say that those first generation trials didn't enhance dose taxel. So what what's your What's your perspective? Are we barking up the same tree again, or is this a different? <laughs> I, I think this, this, that's a great question. I think it's a little bit different. I think that, you know, when those trials were all designed after uh, the SWOG study and, and after uh, the Tax 327 trial, I think everybody was looking to get into the game of having their drug married to docetaxel and then moving forward. And we understood the biology to some degree, but we didn't understand it that well. Now I think we're really understanding the biology better. Docetaxel is still a great drug for this disease, and uh, it's hard to knock it off as a uh, comparator arm. Uh, so you really have got to move the bar up much, much higher mm. uh, to, to see it. So you're, you're, uh, if you're a betting man, uh, are you going to bet that, they're, that the immune checkpoints are going to add something to docetaxel? I'll bet on that, but you know the other line too is that one in 20, 20 trials are going to be positive yeah. based upon statistics. <laughs> so we've got to have one positive study. But no, I, I think that there's good reason to be optimistic with these.